one. Um, um, today is the the um, joy rollback session. Uh, we have a, a speaker um, from Rakhamhan University, Dr. Wanapong Durongkawe. He is going to uh, share his work on cash subsidies. So um, if if, if um, anyone from Mapa University, if you have a question, if, if you are here, please feel free to let me know so I can let you um, take over the session. But um, if um, you have any question, feel free to um, type in the, the comments. Uh, Dr. Wanapong Kap, um, if there is a question, would you like to wait until the end or would you like to to people to like um, just just act as you go along. What do you think? Uh, 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 please, uh, please feel free to to interrupt me. Okay. And how long do you expect your talk? Uh, about uh, forty minutes. Thirty. Okay. 40 minutes. Half an hour. All right. Great. Okay. So, um, without further ado, please, um, please. Uh, uh, take the take, take over the, the session. If you are, um, uh, would you like to share your slide? The one up on. Uh, yes, please. All right, it is uh, good. Um, is it okay to record the session? Uh, yes, please. All right, key hub got added, and I have. All right, so um, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Wanapong Durong Kaverot. Uh, I am a lecturer uh, in economics uh, at the Faculty of Economics from Ramkhamhang University. Um, so thank you very much uh, for having me today. So today I'm going to present uh, my paper and it is uh, my first time uh, to present uh, this paper. Uh, the paper is about cash uh, subsidies for the poor. Uh, I'm going to evaluate the recent Thailand welfare cash scheme. Uh, so here is an outline of the presentation. Uh, uh, I will give you a, a, an overview of the results and then followed by introduction. And I will discuss the analytical framework on poverty reduction. Uh, and then I will briefly talk about the poverty card uh, and methodology result and followed by the, the discussion and conclusion. So here is the overview of the result. Uh, so despite a large scale unconditional cash transfer program uh, that initiated in, in uh, Thailand in 2017, uh, the country saw an increase in national poverty rate by about two percentage points uh, in the following year. So, and given a large evidence uh, based uh, uh, that showing the poverty reducing effects of the cash transfer programs in developing countries, for example, Mexico, Indonesia, uh, the recent increase in poverty uh, incidents in Thailand um, calls for a better understanding of this policy and the extent to which it affects poverty. In this paper, I use uh, the regression discontinuity methods to investigate the causal impacts of Thailand uh, state welfare program on uh, monetary poverty. Uh, and this study finds that the program uh, does not uh, increase the total and consumption expenditure as intended. Uh, moreover, the program causes a decline in the food expenditure. Uh, the, uh, I argue in this paper that it is possibly due to the, in, the high inclusion and exclusion errors. Uh, the findings uh, underscore the need to redesign the program at both design and implementation space. Uh, then we move to the introduction part. Uh, Thailand began implementation of uh, a new uh, social welfare program in October 2017. Uh, it's namely the state welfare gas scheme. It is actually, uh, we know it or we call it the card for the poor. Uh, this is because it's aimed to reach the low income earner. Um, uh, when you look at the breakout uh, of the, the social policy program in, in Thailand over the two, uh, two two to three decades, uh, this, uh, this uh, state welfare 
cast cream is considered the largest non uh, contributory cast uh, transfer program ever initiated in the country. Uh, it reaches uh, more than 20% of the population of Thailand. And each month, the government transfers uh, via card between 200 and, 300, uh, 200 and 300 baht to the card holder. And they also receive a discount for cooking gas purchases every three months. Also, they are, uh, they are also entitled to uh, a 500 baht a month for train fares and uh, a city bus, electro, electric train fares and intercity bus fares. Uh, however, uh, uh, after one year of implementing this program, uh, the country saw a substantial increase in the poverty rate in, in 2018, uh, a year after uh, starting this program. Uh, the poverty rate uh, increased from 7.87% uh, uh, in 2017 to 9.85% uh, in 2018. Uh, the number of poor people in the country increased more than 1.3 uh, million only in a year. Uh, this, is con this is the first uh, increase in poverty rate since uh, the 1988. Uh, we have uh, seen an increase in poverty during the uh, Asian financial crisis and the, uh, uh, the uh, poverty rate increase also in uh, 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 2008 and also in 2016 and 2018. So what explained it? A previous study uh, argued that it is due to a broad-based slowdown in economic growth. Uh, this means that we have seen a slowdown in uh, uh, manufacturing and uh, agricultural production. So uh, the research question and contribution. So uh, even though the literature on the social protect protection programs is uh, quite uh, extensive, uh, the extent to which uh, this program uh, initiated in Thailand, uh, ethnic poverty incident has not been examined. So the present study uh, uh, aimed to uh, examine the impact of this scheme on monetary poverty. Uh, when I say the monet monetary poverty, uh, it is a focus on uh, consumption and food expenditure. So uh, this is considered the first uh, study to examine the causal impacts of this program. Uh, using the RD methods. The analysis also uh, shed light on the ongoing welfare state gas scheme because it is currently ongoing and the future social protect protection programs uh, in response to the pandemic. So why Thailand is an interesting case study? Uh, this is, uh, there are two main reasons. The first one is it is because of the size of this unconditional cash transfer program. And another reason is because uh, of the availability of the data for uh, conducting an empirical analysis. Uh, for brief development poverty story, uh, Thailand, uh, 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 as you know, an upper middle income country has long been uh, recognized as a development success story. Uh, if you look at the World Development Report uh, from the World Bank during the 1980 and 1990, uh, every, year, every year Thailand has been uh, slightly discussed about how Thailand grow and how poverty declines. And over the past few decades, the country has seen a notable decrease in poverty, uh, mainly thanks to an, an, a, a sustaining economic growth. Uh, but recent increases in poverty rates in uh, 2016 and 2018 are cast out on the effectiveness of growth or the role of growth on the reducing poverty. Uh, an increase in poverty incidence uh, in uh, uh, 2018 even deserved uh, more attention because it, is, it happened uh, when the country initiated the large uh, unconditional cash transfer raising uh, more than 20 percent of the population. The next session, the next section is about the analytical framework on how we see the role of what is the role of the cash transfer in poverty reduction progress. Uh, so many studies have uh, have examined the role of economic growth in reducing poverty. And one valid share view uh, is that I think uh, it is in everyone, it is in every uh, development textbook that given an unchanged distribution of income, uh, the benefits of growth uh, will distribute, uh, even though it's distributed slowly uh, to other groups of people. Uh, uh, this 
uh, way of uh, this relationship between growth and, and poverty reduction is uh, commonly known as the trickle down effect. Uh, in particular, uh, for the case of developing countries, uh, when economic growth is uh, associated to a labor intensive activities in which the, the, the growth uh, leads to uh, employment generation, uh, this will result in an increase, an increase in income and eventually reduce poverty or, or backwardy, uh, uh, like uh, the, the, the name, the trickle down effect, but I think it is, we should call it the pull up effect because it pull uh, the income of everyone up and the poverty is reduced. Uh, but it has long been held that economic growth alone uh, cannot eradicate poverty. So this is partly because growth cannot be sustained for a sufficiently long period. Uh, developing country may uh, experience the, the, call the middle income or something like that. And if, uh, but if the economic gro growth is sustained, uh, such growth may be concentrated uh, concentrated among the hands of the few and, and resulting in increasing inequality, especially uh, the early stages of development. And, uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, this is known as the Kuznick uh, hypothesis. And marginalized people uh, or those who work in the informal economy uh, may have no connection uh, to such uh, outstanding economic growth. As such, the government, uh, especially in the poor country uh, implement the so-called the implement the, the sorry the complementary policies this policy aims to, to uh, raise the living uh, the quality of life among those left behind the process of the economic development and these complementary policies uh, that's many many names uh, people uh, uh, people in the social time may call it the social protection programs and over the past century uh, these programs have increased remarkably uh, especially uh, in the era of employment injury, the OS pension, the disability, uh, the rise of social or uh, state welfare. Uh, uh, basically, I uh, uh, found that about 130 developing countries have at least one uh, social protection program. Example uh, is, is the program uh, Kelara uh, in Indonesia and a Progresa in, in, in Mexico. And that's a study uh, found that every uh, African country have at least one uh, social protection program. And cash transfer programs uh, are the non-contributory uh, programs providing a cash benefit to individuals uh, it, it, uh, are central, become central in poverty reduction strategies in the past two decades in developing country. Uh, during this period, uh, there has been a growing body of research uh, that uh, investigate the causal impact of this program, and uh, and overall, uh, they found that uh, this program is uh, is is uh, I mean can uh, significantly reduce poverty, and only few studies have uh, failed to to find the significant effect of the program. Uh, this is uh, uh, possibly due to uh, the program features at the design and implementation stage, uh, or maybe due to to the low level of the transfer to individuals. For Thailand's state welfare card, uh, since the introduction uh, of the national e-payment master plan in uh, 2015, uh, several uh, types of the payment uh, in, uh, infrastructure and electronic payment service uh, is avail are available. In 2016, the government uh, started a project called the registration for state welfare. So, so uh, there are three criteria for eligibility. Uh, the first one, uh, the participant must be Thai, uh, be at least 18 years old or being unemployed or have an annual income uh, less than uh, 100,000 baht. Uh, for those who, whose annual income is less than uh, 30,000 uh, baht, uh, they, will receive, they will receive uh, the 3,000 baht uh, for cash assistance, uh, why for those who, whose annual income is uh, between is in the range of uh, uh, thirty thousand baht, uh, but no, not greater than the one hundred and thousand baht, we receive uh, the one hundred and five hundred baht. So this is the, the one time payment uh, uh, that give to individual in two thousand sixteen. 
Uh, following this program, the government began to we began the state welfare class scheme. Um, the first payment is made in uh, was made in October 2017. Uh, these government welfare programs are made directly to the recipients via state welfare class, or or, or we know it card for poor, uh, based on five uh, criteria for eligibility uh, that uh, they, uh, they must be Thai, uh, they are uh, at least 18 years old, or uh, being unemployed, uh, and also they must have uh, the annual income uh, should be below uh, the 100. A thousand baht and and has no financial assets uh, was more than uh, the one hundred thousand baht or do not own the real estate. The beneficiaries are not paid in cash, but via an electronic card uh, worth two hundred or two to three hundred baht. The exact amount is depend on the level of the income, uh, annual income. Uh, in the first year of the program, uh, the card holders. Uh, uh, must use the card at the so-called the Tong Fa shop across the countries. So this shop uh, sells everyday consumer products, uh, rice, uh, processed rice, shampoo, and personal goods at a subsidized rate. Uh, the beneficiaries are enti also entitled to, to 500 baht per month for train fares, uh, and for city bus, uh, electronic trains, and also uh, intercity bus fare. Uh, there is a change in the card rule. Uh, in uh, from the late 19 uh, uh, from the late uh, 2018 until the current time uh, uh, for example card holders can save the money on the card they can top up some money uh, rather than being compelled to spend all the money within a month uh, they can also uh, uh, increase uh, 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 the card holder also receive uh, some welfare in, in some particular month, for example, uh, during the October 2019 and, and September 2020. So uh, uh, besides the uh, a monthly allowance, uh, uh, they are received some welfare uh, and, 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 and such uh, the welfare increased occasionally during the pandemic as well. So the methodology of uh, this paper uh, for data uh, I, uh, to I examine the causal impact of the Thailand state welfare class scheme uh, with a focus on monetary poverty. And I use the data from the 2019 uh, social economic surveys uh, or SES, uh, it's a nationally representative household survey uh, conducted by the NSO of Thailand. The number of households in, the, in uh, interviewing this survey there was uh, 52,000. Uh, uh, the survey provides uh, information on the income expenditure and covering uh, countrywide samples of private household in uh, both in municipal and non-municipal areas. And I think uh, many of you are familiar with this survey. Uh, expenditure consists of the con uh, transaction costs, uh, including the, the excise and sales tax of goods and services acquired during the interview period. Expenditure includes the funds spent via the welfare care as well. Uh, so is, so uh, my dependent variable is not just the out-of-pocket expenditure. And, other government, uh, and, and the expenditure in the survey also includes other the government assistance as well. While Identification. Uh, this study aims to uh, evaluate the uh, causal impact of Thailand's state welfare class scheme uh, on a set of uh, welfare indicators. So I hypothesized that those who receive uh, this card are more likely to have a higher expenditure on both food and non-food items. Uh, and this will uh, in turn reduce the monetary poverty, uh, which is uh, considered to be the goal of this welfare scheme. Uh, however, uh, those who receive the welfare card uh, are arguably are not randomly assigned, and, and this makes it difficult to examine the effectiveness of the scheme or, or the, the, the treatment effect according to uh, the theoretical foundation, uh, according to the Rubin potential outcome framework. Uh, as such, I employ an RD method to, to address this uh, methodology concern. So uh, there are a few steps uh, to use an RD to uh, investigate uh, the welfare program. The first step is to set up uh, a, run, a running variable and a cutoff. Uh, the running variable uh, will determine the cutoff and then the cutoff source the sample into two, two groups, the treatment group and the control group. 
the idea behind an uh, uh, RD method is that within the narrow, narrow bounds of, of either side of the cutoff, uh, observations are the same in all respect except uh, for the treatment assignment. In this case, the state welfare guard. Uh, the, the regression discontinuity design is considered um, an effective uh, tool to reduce the selection bias resulting from a, a non random assignment treatment like the, uh, this state welfare guard screen. scheme. Uh, so I employ a sharp RD design uh, with a single cutoff. Uh, a sharp RD design estimates uh, the intent to treat. Uh, effects because uh, they provide the impact of this policy as intended, uh, assuming rules regarding the determination of the card holder uh, have been followed. Uh, the cutoff is based on the annual income, uh, uh, which is a key criterion to receive the state welfare card. Uh, therefore, annual income is, uh, in this study, the running variable. Uh, to the right of the cutoff, individual uh, uh, has an annual income that is higher than the threshold. So this group is known as the control group. Uh, for those who are on the right, on the left of the cutoff, this uh, uh, they have an annual income uh, that are lower than the threshold. So this group is uh, uh, is called the treatment group. Uh, for identification, uh, so assume that they are in household uh, that I equal to one, two, three. Uh, until n and each household uh, has a running variable x i and uh, assume that x zero is the known cutoff. Uh, so households with the uh, running variable x i less than the cutoff are assigned to the treatment, and the household uh, with the x i is greater than or equal to the cutoff are assigned to the control. Uh, and uh, the design. Uh, uh, the treatment is designated by a t equal to one, and while the control is uh, uh, t uh, equal to zero, uh, and each household i has uh, two, poten two, two potential outcome, uh, y zero and y i one, and y zero is the outcome to the right of the of the cutoff of, of, of the control group, and Y1 is the outcome to the left of the cutoff of the treatment. So as such, the difference between uh, the Y1 and Y0 is the cause impact of the state of the card. So either uh, Y0 or Y1 can be observed uh, at the meantime, however. Uh, so as described by the imbens uh, and, and blend, the average effects across the subgroups of the relevant population are of interest, so we are only uh, interest uh, the, the average effect, and this underlies the, RD, the RDT. So let TI equal to zero if a household is in the control group, and TI uh, equal to one uh, is a household uh, in the control group, uh, in the treatment group, sorry. So the, the observed uh, outcome is as follows. So uh, given the cutoff, the observed average outcome can be written as as uh, they follow. So we have the uh, yi for those who receive the in for those who are the control and yi for those who are uh, the treatment group. And then uh, here, uh, uh, equation three is the regression function. Uh, we are interested in, in the so called tau. The tau is different in the expectation of uh, those who are in the treatment group uh, uh, and those who are in the control group. Uh, for key identification assumption is that the potential outcome that is uh, uh, the y uh, i0 uh, given x i and expected of the income one for x i are continuous uh, at, the, at the cutoff or x0. Uh, this assumption is important because it implies that the outcome or y i does to uh, the right of the cutoff or the control it can be seen as a valid counterfactual uh, for the outcome just to the left of the cutoff of the treatment. Uh, and since there are no overlap or common support, uh, we rely, uh, I rely on the uh, minimal extrapolation based on the continu continuity assumption. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the units with a different value of the running, uh, of the running variable uh, are controlled. Uh, 
the RD estimation equation is as follows. So we are interested in the tau or the coefficient of treatment uh, 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 variable. Okay, so uh, there are a few assumptions that has been made. For example, uh, the treatment effect is estimated using a non-parametric local uh, polynomial regression within a narrow uh, bandwidth on each side of the cutoff. And I employ the polynomials of degree one in the estimation. Uh, we can do the degree two uh, for the robustness check. Uh, we have also have to select uh, the a triangle kernel. It is it, uh, it's, it's used while the bandwidth are fit using the data driven techniques to minimize the mean square of the treatment, the estimated treatment effect. Uh, note that the estimated effect again is the ITT effects because they provide the impact of the policy estimate. Okay, so. Uh, for, for the result, uh, okay, there is a question about the income in the same way is same as the income used when applying for the card. Uh, for, for the welfare, uh, for the income that's used when applying for the card uh, is considered the annual income. So in this survey, I use the annual income, but the thing is that the, uh, the, the source sources of income uh, in the survey uh, is come from, uh, there, are, there, are, there are two ways to select the income variable. The first one is uh, wages uh, and other uh, uh, return from work, for example, bonuses and something like that. Uh, so I use only wages and bonus, so uh, not uh, the income from other sources. So I think uh, this is uh, quite consistent uh, when, uh, with the rule, uh, 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 when applying to the card, because you have to uh, uh, declare the income. Just for, uh, for example, you have to use the uh, uh, the receipt, uh, the income, the, the, the salary receipt to to apply for the uh, income. Uh, for the results, uh, I will start this section by showing uh, the running variable uh, manipulation manipulation test. Uh, the validity of the RD method uh, requires that it be free of the manipulation. Um, manipulation means that the scores or the annual income in this case, uh, for some people, uh, are not uh, systematically, uh, systematically changed uh, from the true value uh, to influence the treatment assignment. And manipulation can occur uh, if uh, the card holder have uh, uh, no less about the cutoff and have incentive and abil uh, an ability to change the score or the cutoff so that they can be assigned to the treatment group. Uh, so in this case, in the case of this table effect card, the cutoff uh, is proposed by the government that based on actually uh, the official poverty line. So uh, maybe the, uh, uh, the, the, the manipulation in this case is not likely. Uh, but there are a few ways to, to test uh, this manipulation. Uh, this is the uh, density test. Uh, it, it, it is the density distribution of the normalized uh, running variable, which is the annual income. It would be concerned if uh, there is a big jump around the cutoff. So here the cutoff is, uh, is 100,000. Uh, bar per year is annual income. Uh, there's no uh, big jump, so it says that there's no obvious uh, discontinuity in the density uh, around the cutoff. Um, and there is a formal test. Uh, this table uh, show the formal test of the dis of the manipulation. Uh, the purpose of this test is to examine uh, whether there is a, an evidence of discontinuity in the density of the annual income at the cutoff, around the cutoff. Uh, the presence of the discontinuity uh, provides evidence of, for example, cell selection or the non-random sourcing of individuals into the true group. Uh, so uh, it showed that both conventional and robust uh, version of the test, uh, the result cannot uh, reject the new hypothesis. Uh, so uh, so uh, uh, it's, so the formal test says that there is no uh, manipulation. Uh, then uh, after doing the manipulation test, uh, I plot the RD graph. Uh, there are four uh, 
four outcome variables. Uh, panel A is the total expenditure, uh, consumption, exp uh, panel B is consumption expenditure, uh, food expenditure is in panel C, and the panel D is the tobacco and alcoholic beverages expenditure. Um, so uh, the thing is that if the uh, the welfare, the, the, well, the state welfare car, uh, if there is any significant effect, you can uh, see that uh, there is a big jump around the cutoff. So in each, uh, in each uh, panel, um, there is no big jump around, around the cutoff in panel A, B, except panel C. For panel C, uh, the thing for, for panel C, those who are on the the left of, of the cutoff uh, has the, uh, a, a, a clear uh, decline in the food expenditure when compared to those around the cutoff or those who are in the control group. So, uh, so uh, this implies that uh, the state welfare card may fail to increase the expenditure on accessory on items which are central to the material well being of the card product. Um, and there is a pronounced drop in expenditure on food outcome as shown in uh, panel C. Um, so uh, after looking at this uh, figure, I cautiously conclude that the welfare car program uh, may have caused a decline in the food expenditure. And how, however, the project only uh, indicate, indicative and I continue uh, the analysis by performing a formal estimation. Uh, here is a table that shows the result from the RD. Uh, the F4 outcome variable, um, total expenditure, consumption expenditure, uh, food, uh, tobacco, and alcohol. Uh, in each uh, RD estimation, I do uh, two, uh, I mean, I use two degree of polynomial, uh, polynomial degree one, degree two, uh, for, each dependent, for each dependent variable. Uh, and the table also provide the bandwidth. Uh, bandwidth is the number of uh, uh, the observation uh, around the cutoff, and the observation, the number of observation uh, 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 for uh, for the left of the cutoff, and the number of observation in the right of the cutoff, and, and the uh, value of the tau and the p value. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and here is the result. Uh, as you can see that. Uh, the p-value is uh, greater than uh, 0 0.05 for uh, total expenditure, consumption expenditure, uh, tobacco and alcohol, and food expenditure when uh, the polynomial, polynomial degree one is used, is used but uh, not, but, but the, the p-value for uh, the food expenditure when you think the polynomial degree two is less than 0 0.05 and the uh, direction of the effort is negative. So uh, it's uh, consistent with what we have seen in panel, panel C for food pension expenditure. For those who are around the cutoff and in the, and in the treatment group, uh, the expenditure uh, on food is uh, significantly I mean, it's lower when compared to those who are uh, in the control group. Uh, so as uh, shown in table two, uh, none of the estimated treatment effect is uh, uh, statistically significant at the 5% level, except for the food expenditure. Uh, and here there's uh, some uh, uh, reading on uh, the program. Um, so, uh, so uh, for using a polynomial degree one, the program process of 29 bars increase in the total expenditure. Uh, and the second degree polynomial regression result in a negative when nothing can. So it suggests that uh, the program result in a 28 bar decrease in the total expenditure, but first of all, it's not can. Uh, so I conclude that the welfare card program uh, does not have the intended impact on the total expenditure, and it is the same when you look at the uh, consumption expenditure, uh, also the tobacco and uh, 
Okay, and here is the impact from on the food. Okay. This is, we can only when uh, the second degree per meal repression is good. Okay. So overall, uh, the estimate results from the RDD approach uh, suggest that uh, the welfare card program has uh, failed to increase the expenditure per capita as what intended to do. Uh, I have done some robust robustness tests. The first one is alternative cutoff. As you know, that there are two cutoffs. The first one is those who receive uh, 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 those whose annual income is less than uh, 100,000 100, baht, and, uh, and, and another uh, group of people uh, who receive the 300 baht per month is those who are very poor, who are, whose income is actually, uh, 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 to be specific, this group of people is those who live below the poverty line because the annual income is less than uh, 3,000, uh, 30,000 baht per uh, year. And the result is quite uh, the same. Uh, there's no uh, big jump uh, around the cutoff across the all uh, four uh, dependent variables. Uh, however, uh, for food expenditure, the coefficient on, uh, on, on, on the tile uh, when uh, estimating the, the RD uh, equation, uh, uh, when estimating the model using the RD estimation uh, when the, the polynomial degree one is used, uh, the p-value is less than 0 0.5. Uh, 0 .5. So it is, uh, this somehow suggests that uh, the uh, impact on uh, food expenditure is uh, negative and significant uh, for those who are both uh, explaining. Okay, possible cutoff. It is a, li a, li a, li uh, it is a little bit uh, uh, difficult for this because you know when you use an RD method and, and, and for example and you uh, file for example a positive and and significant effect and, and you do you do some fake cutoff uh, in order that you do not get a significant effect but in my case uh, it is no effect so the possible effect uh, uh, also provide uh, a, a new effect as well. So uh, here, uh, I change the cutoff uh, to uh, 20, uh, 20, 200,000 per year. So this is uh, a fake cutoff. I found no impact. It's a little bit hard to explain because uh, the main effect is not uh, significant. Uh, so this question, uh, we have a question like, uh, why? Uh, did the state welfare curve can fail to increase the consumption expenditure as intent? Um, I agree that high inclusion and high uh, exclusion uh, areas uh, for targeted program uh, in the design stage uh, play a key role. Uh, in inclusion error is called the leakage exists when the program uh, reach the unintended uh, beneficiaries and why the exclusion errors or the undercoverage uh, happen when the program failed to reach the intended beneficiary. Uh, inclusion errors um, uh, uh, versus the resources, why the exclusion error makes the program ineffective because it cannot uh, reach the peer. So I evaluate this error um, by looking at uh, the annual income uh, among uh, those who receive and do do not receive the state welfare card. Uh, the analysis is based on the socioeconomic survey uh, conducted in uh, 2019, the same data set, uh, to understand those who uh, receive the welfare card. Ideally, uh, it would be great if the calculation uh, uh, is made is based on the, 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 the uh, economic and demographic profiles of the beneficiary of the program. But the data I have only allowed allow me to examine uh, uh, this area from a nationally uh, representative sample of uh, about 60,000 people. Uh, so here is the result. There are four group of people. Uh, the first one is those whose annual income is less than uh, the criteria, uh, but not receive a welfare card. Uh, here is those whose annual income is less than the criteria to receive the card, but actually get the card. Uh, the second column is those whose annual income is greater than uh, the criteria to receive the card, but actually not receive the card. And 
uh, get it done. Okay. Uh, so um, I found that the inclusion area exists, but it is not very high. Uh, as shown in the previous table, the, the 19% is here, is the, in this box. 19% of the uh, uh, of the respondent have the annual income greater than one uh, greater than the the the, 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 the cut off or the criteria. Uh, uh, these people uh, sh uh, should not have been receiving the welfare card. Uh, in, in addition, there's there's uh, a substantial gaps in the quality of life among those who receive the welfare card, and uh, the annual income is greater than the criteria. Uh, the exclusion error is quite high. Uh, it's about uh, eighty percent. Uh, you can look at it here. So the eighty percent of those whose annual income is less than the criteria are not reached by the welfare card. So this indicates that for some reason, uh, those who are in the same, those who are the same in terms of the economic disadvantage test have a different access to, to, uh, uh, to the card. So uh, the problem of inclusion error, um, I think it's not surprising. Uh, uh, this is regarded as a targeting inefficiency. Uh, the, the eligibility criteria for the state welfare card are based on individuals, uh, but later it's changed on, on based on the household. Uh, it's therefore possible that an applicant may be eligible for assistance despite uh, sharing a house with other family members who are not in the lower income. Uh, group and do not need any state uh, financial assistance. Uh, later, uh, the family best income qualification is used, and um, we may have to access uh, uh, this again. Later, this revision can 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 include um, uh, the poor into the program. The next question is why exclusion error is high. Uh, the exclusion is the this error is the coverage uh, coverage inefficiency. Uh, the state welfare program has uh, several selection criteria such as age, annual income, financial access, and the real estate ownership. So it's possible when uh, these criteria are considered, some people who's, who, who have annual income less than the criteria yeah, or classify as the poor by the poverty line uh, become ineligible for the state of right? uh, A last exclusionary uh, described the failure to screen the poor before uh, initiating the program. Okay, I also in the paper discuss why does the current registration process make it difficult to find the poor? Why it's so hard to find the poor? Um, I think we need a, maybe we need a survey to do this, but some uh, study from TDRI suggests that maybe because of the large informal sector and maybe it's, it's difficult for them to uh, to track the income of the poor working in, in the informal sector and make them ineligible for the job. Uh, for conclusion, uh, this paper has examined uh, the effectiveness of, of the uh, recent Thailand state with a gas scheme initiated in October 2017. Uh, I find that this scheme has no uh, internet effect on monetary poverty. Uh, the estimated uh, treatment effect on consumption expenditure is not uh, significant, uh, and all, but uh, the effect on food expenditure is negative and, and statistically significant. Uh, this indicates that that those who receive the transfer spend less on food. Uh, the policy also has no effect on those who were poor and receiving higher amounts of the cash uh, handouts. Uh, uh, the, the findings are robust to uh, alternative modus specification and assumption. Um, so, given a large evidence base showing the poverty reducing effects of the cash transfer, especially the unconditional cash transfer in several different countries. The new effect here uh, this attention from both policymakers and scholars to undertake a further research. Uh, I, I, ha I have some uh, uh, data to show the evidence of high inclusion and case exclusion error, and I feel that this could be an underlying reason uh, uh, behind the lack of the efforts. Okay, so that's uh, the end uh, from our, our presentation. Uh, any uh, question and comments concerned are uh, very, very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kap.
uh, we have a few questions here in the in the chat box. Would you like to answer that first? Uh, yes. Uh, let me see. From uh, Hansan Tanya. Um, on the income, uh, for those who are with only capital income and have no labor income, let's go. I think uh, for the program to be eligible, um, those who uh, with the capital income and have no income uh, are counted as eligible. For the program, yeah, but I can check later. I'm not very sure about the capital. Okay, sorry, income. I think you misunderstand yeah. my question. My question is that when you answered um, Dr. Vitaru's uh, question, uh, you said that uh, what you only consider is labor income, right? Because in, in SES data, we have two categories of income, uh, labor and capital income. And um, if I gather correctly from your answer, you only consider um, labor income. So which means that if I have zero labor income, but I have a lot of capital income, I will be counted in your sample as those uh, who are eligible for the program, right? Am I right? Yes, yes, you are right, yes. So, so then this bias, the results down, because uh, those with capital income tend to be richer, but then they will be in group of those who receive the cost. So um, the significant people, maybe one of the explanations. Maybe you may want to consider this, uh, this bias as well. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you, Krab. Uh, I, I agree that I have to consider uh, those who uh, uh, has an income from the capital. Um, but uh, according to uh, the RD side, uh, I'm not sure with uh, this exclusion of the uh, capital income will result in the underestimate. Yeah, yeah, but but thank you for your point. Uh, I will have to look at uh, the the uh, the 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 the, uh, the bias of the of the uh, estimation when excluding uh, the uh, capital income. So, Can I just jump in here on the same issue? Uh, because you should be able to look at this to some extent with the SES data, right? Because you've got um, not just a labor income, but you've got um, other types of assets and so on, if I'm not mistaken. Like you, I think you can see if they own a home and, and things like that. So um, you can refine the sample, I think, based on the um, inclusion um, criteria. Um, I am not very sure on this point because um, uh, you know, uh, for the SES, there are few, there are about the 17 records, and the record uh, that I use is record two. Uh, for record two, is uh, collect the data on uh, the uh, individual individual uh, income for 2019. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's only the labor income is But, but you uh, should be able I mean, to link the files um so if you start with file one which is the household file you link the mm -hmm. um individual file back to that and then you can link the the uh household file to then mm -hmm. the other asset files so okay. it should be, yeah so it's definitely doable um okay. then you have to you have a bit of a question and i don't know about the criteria for the poor card but um is it so for example if my son is 19 years old and he's unemployed 
um, does it, but he doesn't own a home, but I do. So the household owns a home. So is he eligible or is he not eligible? And, but from the SES, it would appear he's not eligible because he's in a household that owns the home. So there's, um, so I'm not sure how that's dealt with at, um, I mean, in the actual program, um, but I do think you can actually uh, better refine your um, sort of the inclusion exclusion uh, categories mm -hmm. using some of the other files. You just have to do the linking uh, to do that. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, yes, thank you very much. I think I can uh, link uh, uh, from the record one to record two. And uh, on your case, the son on uh, at the 19 year old, I think you, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he is uh, eligible for the working. <laughs> Okay, so in that case, he may look as if he's ineligible based on the SES, because I think that the assets are at the household level, if I remember correctly. I haven't looked at this for a while. So anyway, just something to think about. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, hi, um, so thank you very much for the presentation. I am Supanika, the one who wrote the two questions. I am sorry because I wrote it before you, um, you presented your discussion about like exclusion and inclusion error. But for the sake of, um, I'm, I'm not very sure that I understand the um, regression discontinuity like that much. But my question is, if some data have problems, for, for example, you know who are the exclusion error, you know who are the inclusion error, you also know the people who may have a lot of asset. Can you just delete those observations before like fitting into your uh, regression discontinuity model? I'm, I'm just asking, okay, I don't know the, the answer, but would that help with the estimation? Mm. I, I uh, okay. F uh, first of all, I think uh, your suggestion is doable. I mean, I can try uh, dropping some observation, uh, but look at those who are not really. Uh, I mean, seem ineligible uh, uh, for the program. Uh, um, but uh, whether this uh, uh, observation uh, dropping uh, you change the outcome, I I'm not quite sure. But yeah, I, I will uh, come back to, uh, I will come back to 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 uh, the the uh, estimation later. But thank thank you very much. I will try to uh, uh, dropping some the observation who are uh, clearly uh, ineligible. Okay, and as for my second question, is about like when you say like consumption expenditure, do you? use the in cash or in kind or both or oh, i'm just wondering if like suppose that i am the poor people with the welfare card and i spend it on like blue fact um store credit or whatever subsidies i use would it appear in the question i mean would they answer it just wondering uh, for the expenditure uh, i tried this both version i mean uh, uh the the result that you have seen is come from uh, the expenditure, the the uh, the total expenditure, uh, no matter how you use it, I uh, cash or uh, the uh, welfare card or other other card, and another one is only the expenditure that you spend cash. But yeah, it, it is there's no uh, different in in the result. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, th thank you for your question. Thank you. Um, so I have I have one uh, quick question. So when you look at income, you look at individual labor income, is that right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what about expenditure? Is that what, what level is that at? Uh, in the record one, uh, that is- So that's household level, right? Record yeah, household level. level and uh, household level, we have expenditure per, uh, capita and I link the ex the how the, the expenditure uh, per capita and assign to those in the record too. So you basically divide household by the number of like yes. uh, the, the size of household, is that right? Yes, yes. Okay, so so maybe you should men mention this. Okay. Um, okay. 
what if in one household there are more than one people receiving the card? Is, is, is that what you saw in your sample? Uh, uh, yes, it, it is possible that one household in one household, uh, there are more than one uh, member who received the card. Yes, it is possible. Uh, yeah, but since, yeah, for, yeah, so then when I, uh, after assigning uh, such uh, household, such uh, expenditure per capita uh, to the uh, individual level, uh, I actually dropped uh, those who's uh, in the same uh, household and received the card. So this means that uh, when doing analysis at individual uh, level, uh, only uh, I assume that only uh, only individual in a, in one household uh, I mean consider a, around cut off. So so it, it means that uh, uh, I only focus on uh, uh, a family in that that the, the only one member received the card uh, around the cut off. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any any other question? Oh, All right. Um, uh, 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 yes, I agree with that. Some time upon that the SEO is biased toward the poor. So yeah, it is it biased toward the poor and and biased toward the rich as well. <laughs> But um, since this is um, considered the best uh, data that we could have, I'm um, not sure I can address this concept. But thank you very much for reminding me this limitation. All right, um, if, if there is not um, any more question, I think this is, um, uh, all of the brow back today. Um, thank you all of you, especially the, the speaker for um, providing us, for, for giving us a very nice paper. Um, um, is, is, is this paper at the stage of publication or are you looking to revise it further? Um, uh, I'm thinking about revising uh, the paper based on the comment that I get today uh, and it will appear uh, as the PIER, P, uh, peer working discussion paper. Yeah, maybe next month or something. Yeah. All right, thank you. And and um, I, I had a chance to read your paper earlier, like last year, I think, at, at here. And I think this is a much improved version. So congratulations. Um, all right. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, next time we have um, Ajahn Oat from Chiang Mai, right? I, sorry, I forgot his uh, first name. Uh, Kihab, do you have um, the name of the speaker? Walapon, ha, Walapon, yeah, Oh, Walapon, okay. okay. Um, all right, so um, see you next time. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, speaker.